Amen. All right. This first statement, the private moments of your life are the what? Most Bad. valuable moments of your life. You know, sometimes we grow up thinking, well, it's just these big stage moments that matter. But if you listen to interviews from even some of the most famous celebrities, recording artists, they are so deeply lonely because the stage provides no real relationship. And so it's like you live for the fame and then you realize once you have it, you're missing what really, really matters. And so for us guys, it's important that we, as we're growing, we keep our priorities correct and we acknowledge that my most important thing in life is my relationship with God. Yeah, there's gonna be other things that come up, other needs, ever, other desires, but if I will prioritize his presence, then all those other things will be added to me, amen? So Ephesians, go ahead. If he, I, was, I was just gonna jump into the okay, verse. Perfect. Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Meaning he prepared them for us. Amen. So God has made you for a specific purpose, but you can't accomplish it if you aren't disciplined behind closed doors. So we're going to run around with the microphone. Um, some of you guys did this on Wednesday night, but just give me some thoughts about some things that you, that you kind of have a desire to do or the way that you want to, like the mark that you want to leave on the world. It's either in marketplace or in ministry. Okay. And you don't have to know all of it, but we need to realize Jesus is coming back soon. So time is of the essence. Right? Let's get going. The first, when I started laying hands on people, I was in fifth grade. You know what I'm saying? So your life doesn't have to start when you become an adult. Now, obviously you can drive and certain other things, but, but you're, you're, you're doing the thing right now, guys. You're going into your world. How many of you guys come to outreach nights at least once a week? Okay, that's almost everybody. You guys are, you're doing the deal. Do you know what I'm saying? You're productive in school. Um, how many of you guys are homeschooled? Raise your hand. Home yeah, let's go. Up. Yeah. Yes, you were. No one can take that away from you. Um, it's amazing. Okay, so here we go. Tell me, raise your hand if you kind of have an idea. I want to be a baker. Baker, oh. yep. In business. So marketplace. I've started my own business doing Christian shirts and stickers. Awesome. awesome. I told him a couple Wednesday nights to start a business. I was like, I'm just like over it. Like we can't count on the adults to do all the work. You know what I'm saying? Like we all work together. Seriously. Okay. Right here. Amberly on the front row. Be an oh. NBA player. A what? An NBA player. NBA player. Nice. That's kind of where you have your eyes. Okay. Uh, I want to be a sports reporter. Sports Ooh. reporter. Okay. That'd be cool. Awesome. I'd be like that one Anybody girl else? with the cool hair. Oh, kind of have a mark? Really, yeah. Have a mark? Something rolling around? I want to be a business owner. There you, you go. Be a business owner? That's great. Millie? Anyone else? Jace? I want to be the drummer for Praise and Worship. Awesome. Let's go. We want you to be a drummer. Yes. Let me get it started. So. <laughs> Okay, anyone else? <laughs> and guys, if you're like, I really don't know, I, have an, I don't have any idea, that's okay. Don't even feel the least bit pressured by that at all. I just want you, and, and again, the, some of the things that you guys said, it could totally change. That's like my idea, but the Holy Spirit, y'all, I, I, I mean, there were so many different things. The marine biologist phase, what was that? What was that, right? I can't even I don't know if good. I feel comfortable with you swimming with those whales. Exactly. That was just like after you leave SeaWorld and you're just so inspired, okay? That was like vacay vibes, okay? It. That was definitely not the, the Holy Ghost. But I want you to realize that God has something specific for you to do that yes, nobody else can do. That's and right. even if you do own a business, your business is going to be unique and no one else's business is going to mm -hmm. be like that, mm -hmm. right? Even though we're youth pastors, nobody else can be y'all's youth pastor. Right. Right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying y'all are a special case. But I'm just saying I'm just that saying like, you got blessed with the you're best. supposed to be where you're supposed to be, right? And we're supposed to be where we're supposed to be. And we do it different than probably anybody else does it. Mm -hmm. Even though we have the same call, it's different, right? So you're, you're unique. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're unique. Turn to your other neighbor and say, I'm, I'm unique. 
All right. Now, 2 Samuel 11, 1 through 5, Dylan's going to come up and read that for us because, listen, David was supposed to be in a certain spot, and when he wasn't in his spot, it didn't go well, right? So turn to your neighbor and say, get your spot. Get your spot. Right? That's the worst when you throw the ball and they don't catch it. And I just want to throw this out. Like, who is the running back for, um, what's his name? Oh, man. It doesn't matter it's if you don't remember to because I Tom might... Brady. Tom Brady. I'm telling you, like, they have such a rhythm. It's like that guy comes out the of receiver. nowhere. Whatever. The receiver. Whoever he is. Which one is it? Mm-hmm. Hold on. Gronkowski was the tight end. Him and Gronkowski were I'm pretty clutch. I'm telling you guys. Did he, like, retire and then come back like out of retirement? Insane. Did he go to Tampa Bay? Wow. So they could stick together? He's like, hey, you and me together we can do, do anything. Brother. Exactly. I'm telling you, it's like he throws it and like he supernaturally appears. Isn't Gronkowski like super tall? Probably has like so a guys, huge... So guys, your spot... If he just throws it. He's not even a good quarterback. It's just if he throws it in this huge vicinity, yeah, Gronkowski's like... Ca- poof, and he catches it with like... your spot Go-go matters. gadget arm. The whole point is your spot matters. I have long arms. Say it after me loudly. Your spot matters. My spot matters. Say my spot matters. My spot matters. David wasn't in his spot. Go ahead and read 2 Samuel 1, 11, 1 through 5. Right here. All these. It happened in the spring of the year at the time when the kings go out to battle that king sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel and they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And the, from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David, so David sent and inquired about the woman. And someone said, Is this not a Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Then David sent messengers and took her, and she came to him. And he lay with her, for she was cleansed from her impurity. And she returned to her house, and the woman conceived. So she sent and told David and said, I am with child. Wow, good idea, guy. Thank you, Dylan. You're such a great reader. Good job, Dylan. Good idea, David. Way to not be in your place and have an affair. And this, in a short period of time, turned into murder. Can I get a big thumbs down? Go ahead and empty out your thumb as well while it's up there. Yeah, not a good idea, right? Your spot matters. And that means right now. The age that you are, the friends that you have, the way that you spend your time behind closed doors. Guys, you're packing habits into your life. And if they are self-serving habits instead of selfless habits, it's going to be very challenging to continue to let the plan of God unfold in your life because you're going to be so selfish. You know, we've we've helped young people kind of navigate God's plan for their life. And they've said, you know, gosh, I've got these desires. But you know what? Their habits behind closed doors took them out. Even though they were talented, even, they, even though they were called by God, their private world took them out. Even with great pastors, great opportunities, it's like nobody believes in me. We believed in you. Wow. We believed in you. We loved you. We gave you a chance. We helped you. But behind closed doors, they didn't work it out. And so guess what? They went on the trash heap. Y'all say, say this after bins. me. Behind closed doors? Behind closed doors. That's where it's at. That's where it's at. It, like, listen, guys, it doesn't matter how it looks like and how pretty you can make it and, and, and the appearance. It's behind closed yeah. doors that matters. So true. The Bible talks about that. God, you know, the Bible says it in different ways, but it's like man looks on the outward. Yeah. God looks on the heart, heart which is behind, right? You don't, we, we don't see our heart. It's behind. He's looking at our heart. Amen. So ground is lost behind closed doors. You guys pull up that video of um, that short interview of um, Michael Phelps and his training. Ground is lost behind closed doors. Just give me the thumbs up when you guys have it. You don't fail the test when you take it, but when you choose not to study. All things being equal, guys, and I know some people are like, I'm just not a good test taker. Like, I knew that stuff, and I just froze. I think sometimes that happens, right? But all things being equal, if you study for the test, you're going to pass the test, right? So it's not like, man, that test was so hard, not for the people that studied, right? So you don't fail publicly unless you've already failed privately. 
Because if you'll prepare and if you'll do what you know to do behind closed doors, you'll have the strength and the wisdom and the power and the discipline to do what you need to do publicly, Mm -hmm. right? It's when you don't do what's right behind closed doors and then you're kind of scrambling. Right. And it's like the, you end up faking it because you want to look like you have it all together. You want everybody to think that you have this great relationship with God and you're obedient and you've got all your ducks in a row. But the reality is the ducks are everywhere. Mm-hmm. Everything's all over the place. Oh, they got it. All right, here we go. We introduced you, Michael Phelps' interview. Just helped me sort of realize what I had done a little bit, but also... St- made me realize that I still wanted to do it. I had some things that bothered me from 2012, losing the 200 fly, not being as prepared as I should have been. Um, and, and, you know, over the last two years, I really just, I, I changed my whole life, really. You know, I, I focused everything on the sport. You know, I was in bed by 10 o'clock. You know, I was getting the right, right amount of recovery. I was, I was um, taking care of my body away from the pool. So all the little small things that I did in my earlier stages in my career, I went back to and did them this time around. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, um, my results in Rio were, they were good. Uh, for me at the age of 31 to be able to come back and, and, and to be able to finish how I did, um, you know, for me, this is how I, want to, what, what, how I want to retire. I wanted to hang my suit up my way and that's it. I think for me, Going in this next chapter of my life, starting that sort of transitioning into um, things that I'm passionate about. For me, when I was 15, when I signed my first contract, I said I wanted to change the sport of swimming. Um, and over 16 years, swimming is it's night and day different than it, than it was in, in, in 2000. So, you know, for me, that's one step that's happened. So over the last eight years, we've taught over 15,000 kids to be water safe. It's a good number, but I want more. Um, building, continuing to build my brand. Um, I always wanted to have my own suit, um, and that was something over 16 years I was finally able to do, was, was build my own suit. There are a lot of athletes who, talented, um, mentally driven, um, who, who are great athletes, but what do you think it is that separates out those athletes to become the, the incredible ultimate elite athletes, the Jordans, the Gretzkys. I wanted to do something that nobody had ever done before. And that started with a dream and a goal. I wanted to be the greatest of all time. I went five straight years without missing a single day of workout, 365 days a year. Every single day I was in the water. And in the sport of swimming, when you miss one day, it takes you two days to get back. We pause it. So I was already- When you miss one day, it takes you two days to get back. Five years, he went 365. Every single day he worked out. That includes Thanksgiving. Christmas. Christmas. I'd be like, it's my birthday. I'm not swimming today. Y'all, first swimming. How many of you guys swim? Not swim at the pool. I like to swim. But it seems like only four of you guys even swim at the pool. But like on the swim team. Anybody Anybody on the swim swim team? Okay. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. Joy was on the swim team. Okay. Let's go back. Pick up where we left off. That much, I was continuing to build on that throughout that time. And, and you know, that was, that was kind of just how I was. There are days you're not going to want to do it, sure. I mean, everybody has those days. But it's what you do on those days that help you move forward. So you hate losing more than you enjoy the winning? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's in, in 2012, I lost the 200 fly by, did he already give his schedule? Frustrating. (laughs) Uh, We won't talk about it. Nine to 10 or whatever. Like, I don't know, two months before trial. Okay. Cause I, I just can't keep listening to him talk until he just says what I want him to say. I was like, Like, well, that's the race. Like I I knew the outcome obviously, but I was watching the race and I was like, well, if I hit the third turn, I win the race. Mm -hmm. And you know, that was something that obviously stuck with me for a long time. You've been through some public struggles, you know, you have to do it in the public eye, unlike the rest of us who go through struggles. Uh, What are the lessons you you take away from that? You know, for me, I have had struggles outside of the pool. I've been in the public eye and not the best way. And and, um, it's not fun. I mean, for me, it's, I, it led me to the darkest place I've ever been in my life, not wanting to be alive anymore. And, and, um, 
you know, for me, I'm so thankful to be able to go through some of the work that I've gone through over the last two years um, to become the person who I am today. And, and um, after some of the struggles, you know, not many people have really seen the true me. And what you're seeing today is the true me. I'm living a dream. So, you know, I'm, I'm in the best place where I could possibly be right now, and, and I just love life. Right. Uh, t so tell us about the Michael Phelps swimming program that, that you've started. Um, Finally. So we have uh, swim schools Gosh. throughout the country, and, and basically it's, it's how I learned to swim. So like I said before, I struggled, Again, like some Struggle. people do. Uh, <laughs> um, I didn't want to get my face wet, so I basically started on my back, and... and my instructor, uh, Miss Kathy, who taught me how to swim, um, basically just allowed me to, to get comfortable in the water. And, and that's the first step. If you can get comfortable and be relaxed in the water, then um, you're practically water safe. You know, for like, we just recently moved to Arizona and in, in, in the first six months of this year, there no were 10, one cares. 10 kids that drowned uh, accidentally. And that has to change. And, and he already um, said it. So with the work of my swim school and my foundation, um, we're okay. trying every day to, to get as many kids okay. as we can to be water Okay, turn safe. it off then. Michael Jordan I just don't remember back. what it was. It was like... <laughs> nine to 10 swimming, then 10 to 11 in the gym, and then like four to six swimming again. 365 days a year, five days, or five years, 365 days. He didn't say that, did he? His schedule? It's fine. We're over it. Yeah, I was Let me just, just tell like you the schedule. It. Swimming, swimming, lots of swimming, working out, eating, swimming. Guys, and that's like, that's for a medal that's going to fade. Go to 1 Corinthians 9, because it's like we, we allow ourselves to be inspired by all of these like, people who don't even know God. And I don't know if he's a believer or not. I don't know that he is, but like we're the church. So we should be oh. doing the very, very absolute best we can do wherever we are and whatever we're called to. And that's not just going to happen overnight. Right. That happens right now. If you're waiting for like, and how do they say it? Like when opportunity comes, it's too late to prepare. That's exactly how they say it. When opportunity comes, it's too late to prepare. So you have to prepare now. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. When you're there, say there. Know you not that they which run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain it. And every man that strives for the mastery is temperate. Everyone say temperate. temperate. That means self-controlled, mm. disciplined. Yes. In all things. Everyone say all things. All things. Guys, did you hear him talk about sleeping? Did you hear him talk about eating? It wasn't just working out. Right. It wasn't just swimming. He had to do all of it. It's the whole package of your life. Mm. It's not just your time with God, but it's your attitude. It's not just what you do, but it's what you don't do. We've coached and we've pastored so many teenagers that came to church that read their Bible, but they didn't have the right friends. Right. They came to church, they read their Bible, but they didn't have accountability. And so they ended up being in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's not just what you do, but it's what you don't do as well. So he went to bed at a decent time and he ate the right stuff. Otherwise, he wouldn't have had the fuel that he needed to do those workouts. So it's, so it's temperate in all things. Everyone say all things. All things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Guys, write this down on your notes somewhere. I'm living for eternity. Hallelujah. So you have to decide. You're either going to leave, leave, live for the now and it's going to be very temporary and it's not going to go with you into eternity or you're going to discipline yourself for what really matters. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I run not as uncertainly. I fight not as one that beats the air, but I keep my body under. Everyone say under. under. And I bring it to subjection lest by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. So number one, your environment. 
Psalms 90 verse 12 says, teach us to number our days and recognize how few they are. So raise your hand if you have like a little trick or you have a system for keeping your room clean or your, all the things that it says there, how you live, what you listen to and what you watch. So you've got some boundaries. Like for example, when I was your age, I didn't watch any movies that were PG-13. I watched my first PG-13 movie when I was 18 years old. So that was just a boundary that I had as, as it pertains to what I watch. So go ahead and fill those in and then I'll have you raise your hand. How you spend your time is how you spend your life. How you spend your time is how you spend your life. So this is about how you live. You will feel better and think better when you keep your environment clean. So you're raising your hand and telling me we clean every Saturday or I clean every day or I always make my bed. I just want to hear your tips because I think that that helps, okay? And then maybe what your tips are as it pertains to what you listen to. Maybe you're like, I listen to Jumpstart Youth Edition every day after school. I listen to it in the morning. Kind of what are your, what are your systems? And then number three, what you watch. Okay, everyone have those filled in? All right, go ahead and raise your hand if you want to share your amazing tricks or schedule or tips tips and tricks for keeping your environment right? Peyton? We clean every Saturday. Okay. And then the music I listen to is worship music. And then I watch baking shows and stuff. You watch what? Baking, baking shows. shows. Baking shows. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Who else has some tricks or tips about environment? I clean like every day and like on Saturdays I clean my bathroom. Okay. And like when I clean I listen to like um some of Carmen's songs. Hey, my man. <laughs> okay. Now, is everybody else like, I don't I have any tips or does that mean I really need to grow in that area? Okay, Amberly. Thank you. Okay, now some hands are coming up. It's like, oh, I guess everyone's environment's trash. Okay. Yeah, hold them high so we can see. Amberly. So every morning when I wake up, I make my bed. That's awesome. Are you so, serious? Yeah. That's so Go, great. Girl. Okay, Millie. Um, so every morning when we wake up, we watch Jumpstart just to like start our day off good. That's good. Oh, yeah. That, that really matters. I love that. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I wake up in the morning, I uh, make up my bed and clean my room. Okay. And I do my chores. And then we clean on Saturdays. And before I go to bed, I listen to a message. Wow. Do you guys like cleaning on Saturday? No. That's a great routine. I want to have a revival of no cleaning on Saturdays with your families. Like, what can we do? Can you guys just do a little bit every day? Does that not work? Everybody's got to do what works for them. I just want to save you from that if I can, but if, maybe I can. Um, when I wake up in the morning... Um, I like do everything before and then like um, right when I'm about to get like I have like 45 minutes before I get picked up so I fold my bed and I clean my room and then I watch Jumpstart and do my Bible reading and then after school I do my main chores for the whole house and then after that I make sure to get my homework done and once I get my homework done then I can relax. Very That's good. great. Great schedule. Getting that great. homework just get it done yep. then you know you have that time it's to so relax. Great. I like of it so much. That's awesome. Um, I get up, make my bed, feed the animals, and then when it comes to cleaning on Saturday, I do everything the day before mm -hmm. so we can... Your Saturday cleaning takes place on Friday? Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. You wake up Saturday well, it, and you're like, I already did it. And guys, listen, don't compare yourself. You might be strong in some areas and still growing in other areas. Do you understand what I'm saying? But sometimes it helps just to hear from your peers, like, because it's like one thing if we say it, but like you guys are doing it at your age. Anyone else have an idea or what, what you're doing to keep your environment? Trey? So what I do is, is um, even though Saturday I don't do anything except just relax, I just like prepare for the whole week. That way I'm not rushing and everything. Oh, that's so good. So what so does I, that mean? Like, So like I do wash all my clothes and stuff, make sure I have everything and um, basically just wash my clothes and yeah. have like, if I have like co-op shirts and everything, like yeah. just make sure they're all washed and everything. That's so good. So even though you're still relaxing, you're getting things done yeah. like for the whole week. Mm -hmm. That's good. I like that. We typically do that too. Laundry. We do laundry on Saturday because you can throw a load in and still like watch a movie or go exactly. grab burritos or throw whatever. Throw another one in. You do laundry on Tuesdays? That's your laundry day? 
Tuesday and Thursday, Fridays? Yes. <laughs> do y'all do your own laundry? Yes. That's so cool that you guys know how yeah. to do that. I never did my own laundry. Which I, now that I'm looking back, I'm like, why did my mom not make me do that? Like, she's awesome. I'm going to give her a big hug after this. I'm going to get like a commercial she washer. She probably should have. You know what I mean? Where I could put all my clothes in there, including like just everything. Shoes, this coats, guy. jackets, everything. Just throw it all in there and just hit the button and just let it go. No. So just watch it all. Okay. Swap. Number two, integrity. Great. Thank you guys for sharing. Give yourselves a round of applause for sharing. Psalms 41, 12. You have preserved me. I didn't welcome anybody that was watching online. Welcome, oh, wait. guys. Welcome. welcome, welcome, welcome. You can tell us in the comments what you do in your environments. Tell us in the comments. We would love, love to Love you guys. Know. Okay. Integrity. Psalms 41, 12. You have, you have preserved, preserved me. me because I, I was, was honest. honest. So you can't have a secure life if you are a liar. The devil is a liar. Mm -mm -mm -mm. But you're not. So don't not. lie. Right. And know that when you lie, you're following him. So don't follow him, guys. It's not worse to lie. It's not worse. The truth is not worse than the lie. That's what I'm trying to say. Right? Well, I just don't want them to know. Like, I can't believe I did this. You did it. You did it. So lying about it doesn't make it go away. Right. It actually makes it worse. Right? You did it. So just deal with what you did. Receive the correction, grow, repent, receive your forgiveness. Amen? Amen. Okay, number three, disciplines. First Timothy 4.10 says, exercise daily in God. No spiritual flabbiness, please. Workouts in the gymnasium are useful, but a disciplined life in God is far more so. Making you fit both today and forever. So raise your hand, fill in the statement though, and tell me what do you know to do every day? And you guys kind of already shared that, but what are some things that you do every single day? Just like Michael Phelps said, sometimes you don't feel like it. Millie, we'll start with you. Then we'll go to Peyton. So every day I make the, my lunches, the lunches for siblings, and then I do my Bible reading. <sighs> that is so tender. Like you make everybody's lunch. Janiah's too. How can, how can we get on that list? Millie, hook it up. We want to get on that list. Just kidding. Hey, Heather makes our there's lunch. your business right there. Heather makes our lunch, literally. People, Heather! She's amazing, y'all. You should see Pep has radar. Like, when Pep knows that Heather's coming, she's like, gets up and gets ready, and then poof, she pounces because Heather brings her. I mean, she, Heather doesn't make Pep's lunch. The cafe makes, makes Pep's lunch, but and she brings do, it. And they do a good job. Okay, Jackson, then we'll come to this section. Um, what I do every day is like, um, like, I wake up, like, eat breakfast, um, get some coffee, um, clean my room, do my devotion. Get some what? Coffee. You drink coffee? <laughs> yeah. Hey, do you drink a black? No. You should switch to black. You'll like it. Gross. I just, just realized. Okay, what are some other things you know to do every day, Jackson? Do my devotion, clean my room, do um, do my school after, yeah. after my school, um. Do um do ex extra chores and yeah, Millie. Uh, we spent so much time on lunch. I didn't focus on the fact that you read your Bible every day. That's an amazing thing to do. I was, <laughs> I was so caught up on the lunch. Obviously, the most important thing. Exactly, Peyton. What do you know to do every day? Um, brush my teeth and do my school correctly. I really appreciate someone saying brush your teeth. That's good. You guys all do that, right? You just didn't say it. I just want to make sure. Okay. Bare minimum. <laughs> Back to like, light bulb. Write that down. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Um, Annette? I do my Bible reading and then I get my siblings ready. Great. Great, great, great. Hashtag firstborn. Amberly? So every night before I go to sleep, I get my clothes ready like the yeah, day that's before. That's a good thing. So and then I'll put my rubber bands in before I forget. There you go. Very good. Yeah. Very good. How many of you guys get your clothes ready for the next day? That's smart because you're just saving yourself from that like you're running late and then all of a sudden you're under pressure. Yeah, I have no idea what you're going to wear. Okay, Mary? Um, I would say that I like, I put all the stuff in my lunch that isn't refrigerated the night oh, before. So good. So it doesn't take as long to make in the morning. So it's like partially packed. I like yeah, that. And then um, I do my Bible reading too. That's oh. really good. Great, great, great. Anyone else have some things that yeah. you know to do every day? I know to do these things every day. doesn't mean that you're even doing them. 
I like it. Bathe. Take a shower. Guys, not everybody bathes every day. So, I, and you don't need to raise your hand, but I know that that can be a thing. And I encourage you to shower every day. All right. I just want to say thank you in advance by faith. Thank you for showering every day. Okay, next. Do what you don't want to do first and then relax. That takes discipline, but you got to do it. And guys, sometimes just set a timer for yourself. I tell myself, I can do this in five minutes. I'm just going to hurry. I'm just going to go. I don't want to do it, but I'm just going to get, I'm just going to knock it out. I'm just going to run around, knock it out. Like I'm literally sprinting in my own house, like I'm in a hurry and I'm not in a hurry, but I just want to get it done because my flesh doesn't want to do it and it needs to be done. Right. All right. When it comes to problems, guys, first Samuel 17, y'all pull us up a David and Goliath cartoon just so we can have that moment today. Just show us a David and Goliath cartoon. Guys, I just love that David just like saw the problem and he attacked the problem. He didn't sit around and be like, well, honestly, I'm, I mean, compared to him, I'm really small. Right. I've never been trained. You know, some people, they just analyze problems. It's not my favorite. I'm just like, why are we talking? Let's start moving. Okay, even if you're move talking it, and moving, like, like, please. And, and guys, sometimes, like, I'll jump out and start doing something, and it's like, I should have planned a little bit better. Pastor Greg typically plans better and then starts moving. I'm like, we got to get going in the right direction. Sometimes I can be impatient. But the reality is, like, you need to determine right now, if you're the kind of person that's like, oh, God, what do I do? You know, think about this that Pastor Kathy always told us. How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Right. So even y'all, when you're folding your laundry, do like, let's say you have socks, you have your unders and you've got some towels. I do all my stuff super separate y'all. So I only do socks, never hang out with anything but underwears. There's nothing else ever in the, at the same time. And so, um, but what I'll do is I'll do all the socks first and then like, like minded, do you know what I'm saying? Like type. So when you're cleaning your room, I've watched some people before and it's like, even like when you're cooking, some people, I'm just like, oh my God, they're like a bull in a China shop. They're like all over the place. It's like, start this, get this going, then do this. You know what I mean? Like in your bedroom, start in one area, right? Don't pick a couple things up here and then go over here and get distracted and start, then nothing's finished. And it's time to go to bed and you can't even say that you cleaned one area because you just dabbled. You, who's a, anybody dabbling? Any dabblers in here? Be honest if you're a dabbler. Dabble dab. It's like I made some progress. It's like, is that all you want to do is make progress or do you want to finish something? Do you know what I mean? Like take one drawer at a time. If everything's a mess and you're not organized, then you do one thing at a time. You got to dab, share, dab, dab. I Everyone mean, dab. what is the dab? Everyone dab. <laughs> All the dabblers. Dab hey. Well, it's just like, you know, you're doing something, and then something else on your mind, like, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that now before I forget. And then you do something else and you do something else. And then it's like you have nine projects started, but none of them finished. I love everything about it. You know what? You know what's so great about me and Pastor Charity? I'm like, could infinitely plan for our plan. We can make a plan to make a plan for the plan. And then Pastor Church is like, fire, ready, aim. And so it's like her initiative and like, let's do it plus my planning. It's like spurs me to like have more initiative and it spurs right. her to actually plan a little bit more. So we all balance each other out. Amen. Well, and guys, you can learn. Like Pastor Faith is not a typical baby because the typical baby's like. Birth order. Birth order, right? She's a baby though. But if you guys look in this, I'm not, I'm not, I don't celebrate this. This is a very tragic thing. Like I was in Pastor Faith's room one day and her closet was trashed and I was like so frustrated with her. Do you guys know the story? Yes. I was so frustrated with her. I was so mad at her because she didn't ever organize her stuff right. And so I sat down in her closet. She was behind me and I was like throwing everything out of it. Like Faith, I can't believe you did it like this. And I, a, a, a notebook hit her in the face and it cut her face. And so she fell down. And of course I feel like horrible, like who cuts their sister's face over the organization? Do you know what I'm saying? And so she literally bears. She already mark. says that also. My sister bears a scar and she left bears the scar in her left cheek of my passion. So obviously faith is very organized. You would be too. If you had a scar on your face yeah. as a reminder, y'all, she throws everything away. 
She is so organized now. True. Everything is in its place. And I don't want to take credit for that because it seems like a very abusive relationship. <laughs> this was a one-time thing. Okay. It didn't happen ever again, but, but the reality is she just crammed everything. She didn't go through it. And now she's learned to go through it. Are any of you like me and you wish that Pastor Charity had trained you growing up and you were like super organized now because of Pastor Charity's passion? <laughs> Oh, that would have been so Guys, awesome. if you're a dabbler, there is hope for you. I just want you to be, just don't do something else until you finish the thing you're already doing. Don't okay. do that. Just finish what you start. And if you need to make note of it so you don't forget, write it down. Write it down. I always have, and y'all, <gasps> listen. I did that. I finished that water before I started this. I, I told myself, after I drink a bottle of water, then I can have some organic you need caffeine. To celebrate. Celebrate the small victories, guys. Guys, how you approach problems really, really matters. Because if you can't tackle, what did, what did, up the stairs. what did David kill before he killed Goliath? The lion and the bear with his bear hand. Right? Now, if he'd have been crying to daddy, there's a lion out there, there's a bear out there. Do you think that he would have had the confidence to take on Goliath? You've got to celebrate the, you got to win little before you can win big. That's so good. Okay. Because that was a big part of David's confidence. You know, we've talked with young people before. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's like, you don't even do your homework. Oh, preach that. Preach that. You know what I'm saying? Preach like you that. should start with that. Okay. Okay. So don't do, do what you, oh, okay. Tackle problems. You have to tackle problems head on literally. Tell me when you guys have David and Goliath. They've got it. Let's take a oh, look. Oh, that was what the thumbs up was. Okay, I got it. <laughs> Slapstick Theater. David and Goliath. This is David. Hey! David was a shepherd who lived in Bethlehem. David was chosen by God to be the next king of Israel when he was just a boy. But David had to wait a very long time until that promise would come true because there was another king of Israel named Saul. Saul led the armies of Israel. One day, King Saul was with his army near the Valley of Elah. On the other side of this valley, the Philistines, the enemies of Israel, gathered their army ready to fight. The Philistines had a giant warrior named Goliath who challenged the Israelites. Hey! Goliath spoke badly of God and his people. He shouted and taunted them, saying, Choose one man to come down here and fight me. The Israelites and King Saul were very afraid. Meanwhile, David's father sent David to bring some food to his brothers and their captain. Goliath came out of the Philistines' army, and David heard him shout his usual mean taunts to the army of Israel. Oh, what? As soon as the Israelites saw Goliath, they began to run away in fright. See ya! David asked, who is this Philistine anyway that he has allowed to defy the armies of the living God? David's questions were reported to King Saul, and the king sent for him. Uh, hi. David said, don't worry about this Philistine. I'll go fight him. Saul said, there's no way you can fight him and win. You're only a boy. Wait. But David told Saul that he had taken care of his father's sheep and rescued them from lions and bears. Then David declared, The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and bear will rescue me from this Philistine. So Saul said, All right, go ahead and may the Lord be with you. David picked up five smooth stones from a stream. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight Goliath. When Goliath saw him coming, he sneered at him and yelled bad things at David. But David said, You come to me with a sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of Heaven's armies. Goliath moved closer to attack, and David quickly ran out to meet him. He hurled a stone from his sling and hit Goliath in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell to the ground. 
So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. But he knew the power of God and trusted God to win the battle against the giant. Hallelujah. Literally attack the problem head on, right? So you've got problems, you and sometimes, guys, like you may not know exactly how to do it. Like I always ask the Holy Spirit, like Holy Spirit, help me. If I'm gonna cook, I'm like Holy Spirit, help me make this. Pastor Cherry's amazing cook. She made red beans and rice the other day. Oh my goodness, it was so good. Then she made baked ziti. Oh y'all, it was amazing. A matter, matter of fact, I'm about to go home and have some of that. Hallelujah. So he took on the issue head first, right? Head on. That's what we have to do. We got to take on the issues in our life. And we have to start with the things behind closed doors. Well, and if you ask, if you, if you need help, ask. Sure. You know what I mean? But don't avoid problems. They get bigger. Right. right? There's some things that, that the enemy would love for you to just feel like, well, if I just had somebody to talk to. When it's really, that's not the case. That's not right. the problem. The problem is you know to do, but you're not doing. Or you're waiting for the feelings. Or instead of doing it a little bit every day, you're, you're not like, gonna I'm going like to do it. that all day on Saturday. And then it's so overwhelming by that point, you don't even want to do it. So just tell yourself, I'm going to organize this bookshelf. I'm going to organize this drawer. Right? And that starts with even like when you get home. Everything has a place. Mm -hmm. My dog's bag goes in the same spot. My purse goes in the same spot. Everything goes in its place every single day. When I got done with my makeup this morning, I cleaned the counter, put all the makeup underneath the cabinet where it goes. Everything goes in its place. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. All right. Lastly, your relationship with God. So talk to me. You guys can tell me a little bit about your schedule or your plan. And let's have, um, let's see. Rocky, you can come and read Psalms 119. Sweet, sweet girl. And this is 1 through 6 and then 9 through 16. She'll come to my side and read on pink Copy. papers. Pink okay. papers. Start right here. No, thank you. Right there? Yep, and then the next page. Happy are, happy are all who perfectly follow the law. Hold on, please. We need to make sure she has a mic that works. Battery. There we go. We got a new one. Happy are all who perfectly follow the laws of God. Happy are all who search for God and always do his will. Rejecting compromise with evil and walking only in his path, you have given us your laws to obey. Oh, how I want to follow them consistently. Then I will not be disgraced, for I will have, have a clean record. How can a young man stay pure? By reading your word and following its rules. I have tried my best to find you. Don't let me wander off, your, off from your instructions. I have thought much about your words and stored them in my heart so that they would hold me back from sin. Blessed Lord, teach me your rules. I have recited your laws and rejoiced in them more than your riches. And I will meditate upon them and give them my full respect. I will delight in them and never forget them. Very good. Great job. Give that to Brindy. Give that to Trey. I apologize. Y'all, my favorite is like, I want to follow them consistently. Hallelujah. Right? You want to have a good day or a good life? <laughs> That's good. Hopefully you want a good life, right. which means you got to make every day awesome. You got to be consistent every single day. So WWP, your relationship with God involves the word, worship, and prayer. So we kind of already talked about this, but just tell us what your quiet time looks like. Some of you guys already mentioned it in your environments, and some of you mentioned it in your days, what you know to do every day. But tell us, what does your, well, let me give you the blanks, and then you can tell us. WWP is word, worship, and prayer. Number one, read it, listen to it, and speak it. So listen and speak are your blanks. Number two, music has a spirit attached to it. What are you yielding to? Music has a spirit what are you yielding to? And then number three, how important it is to pray in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
All right. So raise your hand if you want to tell us a little bit about your quiet time, where you do it, how you do it, what tools you use when you do it. Go ahead, Jack. So um, I do my quiet time on my desk where I do my schoolwork. And, um, Great idea. How I do it, I, um, I use my Bible. I, I got like from, I had in the little notebook that I write what the Holy Spirit told me. Told me and um and while that, like, I pray in the Holy Spirit sometimes when I clean my room. Okay, that's great. Awesome. Who else? Tell us a little bit about your quiet time. Hannah, you look really good in blue, Hannah. It's a really good color for you. Um, some, I, I, sometimes I do, I literally, I have two places I do my quiet time. Okay. I do, sometimes I do it. And we have this back room where my dad does, like, the sets and stuff. Yeah. And sometimes I'll do it on my bed. And um, I'll do my Bible reading, and then I'll put on some worship some worship music while I'm doing it. And then I'll pray in the Holy Spirit, and then I'll just worship through a song. Okay, what's your favorite worship song right now? Uh... Mm. I think I stand in awe and um, Psalms 23. Very good. I think it's important that we share because sometimes it's like Pastor Faith always has a new song and I'll just borrow her new song. You know what I mean? Then I don't have to like find out what's good worship music. She can just tell me, hey, what's good? Okay, Millie, tell us. Great job, Hannah. I like it so much. Check. Oh, there he goes. Um, so me and Malia do ours together because there's like no one else, nowhere else quiet because we've got like 25 brothers that are yeah, loud. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh. Mm-hmm. So me and her, I try to not put anything else like that's electronic around me. So I have my Bible, my pen and highlighter in my Bible reading. So I'll do the Bible reading and then we'll do, we'll pray in the spirit. Sometimes we pray longer than the other days. Yeah. And then um, we have worship music on while we're praying. Very good. good. That's so good. I like that. <clears throat> I do mine in my room on the floor so I don't fall asleep on my bed. Yeah, good and, idea. Um, I use my Bible, not my phone. And I pray and get everything out that I need to get out. Before. Hallelujah. Good. And then I listen to worship music while I do my Bible reading. Very wow. good. Very good. Anyone else want to share? And if you don't have one, if you're like, I don't have a quiet time, that's okay. You're hearing some ideas, but this is a discipline that you want to start because gosh, y'all, we've had, we've had amazing students in our lives over the last however many years, a couple years. It's been longer, but I'm not telling you exactly how many years. One or two. By design. And, and y'all, they, they served in church. We hung out with them. We would go to their games or we would pick them up from school and we would read together. But guys, they weren't doing it for themselves behind closed doors. And so today, so many of them, they're not in church. They're not in the will of God. A young adult that we had the opportunity to shepherd in youth ministry, um, she's not in church and kind of, you know, doing her own thing. And she told, uh, she ran into somebody that's in church and she said, I've got to fix some things. And honestly, I know I don't move past my last act of disobedience. And so the girl that goes to church was like, well, what was the last thing you knew to do? And she's like, there was a book that Pastor Charity told me to read and I need to read that. Wow. Well, you praise know. God, she she remembers, and praise God, she's she's putting herself on blast. Hey, I need to go back to this. That's right. amazing. Okay, Mary. Um, I have a Bible that my mom gave me to use with a different version. Oh, cool. Um, and I have a little notebook that I write like what I either what I got out of the verse or like what the Holy Spirit tells me. Me too. Perfect. And so then I watch Jumpstart while I'm doing it, and I'll pray in the Holy Spirit for like ten minutes. Awesome. Very good. Very cool. Very good. Okay, great. So. Guys, just fix behind closed doors. So good. If you're like, I'm trash behind closed doors. I always do what I want. I always eat what I want. I don't have any disciplines. That's okay. Just start today. Yes. Okay. I could make that a wrap, but I just, I need you guys. You guys did so good on stories with y'all's raps. Because like when that starts happening, it all falls apart for me. I'm just like, Ugh. Do you have anything to add, Pastor Greg? We love you guys so much. We do. We love you guys. And, and we're, we're not saying that it's okay to not, not do what you know to do, but we're saying 
Don't beat yourself up because Don't you haven't. That's Just say, I'm drawing a line in the sand and I'm going to change. I'm That's going right. to do things different. I'm going to go back to my last act of disobedience. Amen. Amen. Okay.